video is part three of the world-class prevention, uh, personal prevention experience. We start off talking about basic plaque science. Then we get into the role of education in this process. It's critical. Then we start going into comparisons of stress tests, calcium score, and CIMT. The next video, the entire video, part four, is on the CIMT. Um, <clears throat> We end up this video with some discussion about that debate on K2. Can I take K2 and improve my calcium score? This is part three of the series on the personal prevention experience. And we're, uh, again, we're going over the basic understanding of what happens with heart attack and stroke. In part two, we talked about what really happens with plaque and causing a heart attack. The fact that plaque um, gets attacked by our immune system, when it does, it forms a liquid. Uh, that all works well because um, you have to turn something into a liquid, the immune system does, in order to get rid of it. However, there's a big problem, and that is the same things that, uh, that turn that plaque or LDL in the artery wall into a liquid also cause clots. And it's the clot that um, causes the heart attack and stroke. If it's big enough and goes to the heart, it causes a heart attack. If it's big enough and goes to the brain, it causes a stroke. But here's where this next series starts. What about those microscopic, uh, tiny little amounts of, um, of, of wet plaque or liquid plaque. What happens when they have when they go out? Don't they still hit small enough arter, uh, arteries to cause damage to just a few cells? That's exactly what goes on. So <clears throat> plaque ruptures cause the majority of symptomatic events, you know, the, a heart attack or a stroke. But the majority of plaque ruptures don't cause symptomatic events. Now, what does that mean? Again, there are far more microscopic size plaque ruptures than there are large size plaque ruptures. Now what does that turn into on a long-term basis? Well if you have that going on 10, 20 hours, days, months, years, a couple of decades of your body spilling and showering your body with uh, these microscopic events results in sort of a Swiss cheese type of effect on your brain, which is a major cause of dementia, on your heart, which is a major cause of heart failure. Again, you're starting to get the picture. Um, speaking of the pictures, let's look at it a slightly different way. So again, if you look at, uh, if this is an artery, and it is reminiscent of an artery with uh, plaque in it. Uh, let's go back and look at one of them. Here, see that would be the artery wall, the intima, the and the plaque in between. Let's go down here and look at that. So here's the the intima, the artery, the media, and the plaque in between. And here's that um, area of hot plaque. If you get a, a plaque rupture there and it's microscopic, then again you get that um, just a few cells at a time uh, get killed because those microscopic um, uh, emboli or clots are only going to hit very, very small vessels. What happens when you get a big one though? It's called a thrombotic event and if it goes to the heart, it's a heart attack. Again, you get the picture. <clears throat> I'm going to skip over a couple of these uh, last items. This was again out of the Baildenine deck, as many of these are, and he's talking about, uh, he and, and Amy are talking about uh, it's a better thing in terms of at least cardiovascular prevention to be focused on inflammation, education, um, looking at disease instead of looking just at risk factors alone. Disease in this case meaning um, having plaque in your arteries. Waiting for something to happen, looking at risks only, uh, failing to educate the patient. Yes, it is. It's standing on a house of cards, and it's a very good point. Um, Here's a, another point about uh, docs haven't always been right. 
in the past, yeah, docs even uh, encouraged uh, cigarette use. And these days, there's a lot of docs that are encouraging repetitive stress tests. But uh, who's not heard of somebody who passed a stress test and then died? If you haven't, uh, look up Tim Russert. So we should be doing far less uh, stress tests and far more CIMTs. Patients have a, who have a normal stress test frequently have extensive atherosclerosis. That's, um, that's well known. The carotid artery serves as a window to uh, systemic atherosclerosis. And so, as we talked about earlier, um, this is a systemic disease. If you have these hot plaques in one area, you're going to have them in other areas. In this um, cut through an artery, they had another uh, hot plaque area right in the same cut. So if you go and look at something like the, um, the carotid artery and you see hot plaque in the carotid artery, you're going to see it in the um, arteries to the heart as well. So we're starting to talk about CIMT, carotid intima media thickness test. Uh, the American Heart has, Association has looked at it and their view is it's safe, it's non-invasive, it's in, inexpensive, it's valid, and it's reliable. Um, non-invasive meaning the other competing uh, image for, or imaging system for this is usually going to be a coronary artery calcium score. And I do get coronary artery calcium scores. I probably get several hundred CIMTs for every one coronary artery calcium score that I get. The... Um, one of the knocks on the coronary artery calcium score is that it's radiation. But the reality is um, it's not significant radiation compared to the risks that we're looking at. Here's the thing, though. There's no radiation with the CIMT, and that's why the American Heart Association has said, look, it's non-invasive. It's valid and it's reliable. So what is CIMT? It's looking at your plaque. Well, you know, if you look in any major city, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of places that are freestanding or hospital-based that have radiology units that'll do a carotid ultrasound test. But that's not exactly just a CIMT. A CIMT does involve getting a carotid ultrasound, but it also involves uh, doing some work. This is the ultrasound here. It looks at the structure, but the CIMT is a special uh, component that very few people do. Very few, uh, like I said, one out of several hundred radiology units will actually do a CIMT. It's a software approach. You look at a, uh, a one centimeter area of nice, flat, level, common um, carotid artery. Then you measure that space, the intima media thickness area. Now let's go back and talk about and look at what is that again? As I mentioned in uh, previous videos, it's the space between the intima layer and the media layer. In other words, you're measuring the thickness of the plaque. And as I mentioned in uh, that before, even within the same area of the artery, you can get a significantly different level of or thickness of plaque. Now, why is this important since it's so difficult? I mean, you may look here and see a small amount. You may look here and see a lot more. Why is it important to do that? Why don't we just ignore it? Well, those uh, 299 radiology departments that don't do this have that perspective on it. But again, if you go back to the Cafes de Cave study, you see that when you find patients that have this, you're uncovering a whole set of patients that have major risk that they didn't know about. So that's the reason for doing this. Um, we'll get to that again a little bit later as we go into the uh, CIMT section.
As I mentioned, coronary artery calcium scores are basically taking a radial, a CT look at the, uh, at the heart and then taking a look at how much calcium is in the arteries of the heart. Now, calcium is a, this whole concept confuses the heck out of a lot of people. And one of the places where you see that confusion uh, writ large is with K2, vitamin K2. There's this perception that vitamin K2 takes calcium out of arteries. There's also this knowledge that the, the more calcium you have in the coronary arteries, the more your risk for heart attack and stroke. So people say, let me take vitamin K2 and get all this calcium out of my arteries. All of that sounds very logical and again, common sense, until you consider the fact that calcification of the plaque in an artery on CIMT shows that it, it has become stable. So it's sort of like cement, maybe. It, it helps stabilize that hot, soft plaque. In fact, if you have um, these areas where you have calcification, those areas are not going to throw plaque. So why would people want to pull those out? And why do you have this relationship? The more plaque in this, I mean, the more calcium in this uh, CT, the higher the risk. Well, it's really an issue of time and um, continued addition of plaque. The bottom line is the more uh, inflamed or hot plaque you have, the more calcification you're going to have. So when you begin to consider that, then you can understand why more calcium on a calcium score increases your risk. But you can also understand why just taking that calcium out of those plaques, even if vitamin K2 actually did that, which has not been proven, might not be the absolute best thing to do. And again, if you have more questions about that concept, I've got plenty of videos on it. I would refer you to those. We're planning a PrevMed only event on um, November 8th and 9th in Louisville at the Louisville University of Louisville Conference Center. Uh, Michelle posted this preliminary statement on Thursday or Friday, and within an hour we had uh, one person already purchase a slot and two other people wanted to reserve slots. Um, <clears throat> why did we do this and what are we talking about? Well, the Healthy Life Summit was a, uh, about three quarters uh, folks of the folks were um, YouTube uh, viewers of this channel. And they gave us really good feedback. They said it was a great event, but we really need uh, to focus more on just um, PrevMed type of stuff, looking at specifically heart attack, uh, stroke prevention, dementia prevention, uh, have topics related only to what we're doing, cardiovascular inflammation, major causes like insulin resistance, lifestyle inter interventions, uh, stroke prevention, um, those types of things, and not do any of the uh, other business-related items. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and like the uh, Healthy Life Summit, we have a couple of options. One is to just come in. You will get the CIMT if you just come to the event. Um, the other one is to get a complete evaluation. So it would be two days uh, with CIMT and labs. So it's a great way to do it. That was the other thing that uh, the uh, YouTube viewers uh, told us. They said it's a great way. You come in, you get a, a complete evaluation. You get your CIMT, which is very difficult to find. And you get your uh, all your labs. And you have a two-day boot camp on what all of this means. So, <clears throat> yes, uh, we have it uh, getting started, and it's coming out of the blocks pretty popular. So go on over to the website, take a look, and um, tell us what you think. I'm going to be, uh, I recently recorded another video which used this same slide deck and got into a lot more detail regarding how the costs are developed. Um, it, it's expensive whenever you start doing all of this testing. Uh, we'll get into some of those details later. But this is just a, an announcement and uh, look forward to seeing you there if you can come. Thanks.